Time now for your forewarn weather with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. It's been a showery Tuesday and we've amped it up in the south. This is what it looked like this evening in Iron County. Cedar City with a wet pavement. You look towards the mountains, you can't see much. And those soggy conditions want to hold on, not just in southern Utah, but throughout the state as moisture pushes further north into the central part of the Beehive State and then along the Wasatch Front. As we look at precipitation totals thus far, really healthy amounts from the first wave of wet weather, more than three quarters of an inch in places like Kaysville, Centerville, close to that in North Ogden, more than half an inch in Brigham City, Cottonwood Heights, and measurable moisture for Salt Lake, Sandy, Wellsville, and Logan. Now, the southern and central part of the state get in on that moisture. And here's that line from L.A. into southern Utah, southwesterly flow dragging that moisture from an atmospheric river event into the Beehive State. This is all linked to that upper level low. We put this into motion, and you see the last few hours along the Wasatch Front, that wet weather has been filling in, and we've continued to see it in southern Utah. And that means soggy conditions. Now, we did upgrade to that winter storm warning for the southern mountains with accumulating snow on the way. Unsettled day in Cache Valley. Great time lapse out of Logan. You see the sun fighting to come out. Showers on and off. A little bit of rain, a little bit of snow. Pretty shot as the sun's getting ready to go down. High temperatures today, 50 degrees. 10 degrees cooler than yesterday following the cold front that came through this morning. 40s in Logan and Provo, the basin. Upper 50s in Moab, 56 in St. George, where that wet weather kept the warm up at bay. Usually this time of year, 60 is the average high, 40s along the I-15 corridor. Precip potential heading into our Wednesday absolutely loves the mountains. Noticeable there when you see that wet weather, especially in southern Utah. Let's step back and look at the reason why. We've talked about that atmospheric river event and that upper level low and its counterclockwise flow allows us to drag that subtropical moisture inland. And yes, it enhances the precipitation as we get waves of moisture and that their showers really capitalize on that precip as a result of what's going on. As we look at the future cast, you're able to see active skies by ABC4 News at 10 along the Wasatch Front. Showers in southern and central Utah holding on. Eventually, that low tracks inland. We stay very active for our Wednesday with the potential of valley rain, mountain snow sticking around, the low tracks across the Beehive State, and we start to clear that moisture by late Wednesday, early Thursday for most of the Beehive State before high pressure takes over. Now, when all is said and done, we get some really healthy mountain totals. One to two feet expected for the Cottonwoods, six to 12 in the southern mountains, up to 18 for the Tushers and near Bryan Head, five to 10 for the central mountains. Now, some of our mountain valleys could get up to three inches. Really, the timing of the precip tonight could mean a wintry mix or straight snow in some areas, especially the Wasatch Back, Park City, Morgan, Liberty, Eden, all those spots could definitely see some snow accumulation. Benches, we'll see maybe an inch. Valleys, straight rain. We dry things out as we roll Friday into Saturday with high pressure, but doesn't last forever because you see the chance of wet weather increasing as we roll into next week. Tonight, temperatures in the 30s, upper 30s in Salt Lake, 40s in St. George. Looking at those numbers on the eastern side of the state tomorrow, 58 in Moab, 46 in Salt Lake, Cedar in the low 40s and mid 50s in Washington County. Here's that seven day where we get rain for our Wednesday with a warming trend into the 60s and wet weather by early next week. The Wasatch Front, same pattern here. Isolated showers possibly early Thursday morning, but the warming trend brings us to the 50s. That's above average and rain moves back into the forecast Monday and Tuesday of next week. So active skies do return next week as we get through these additional periods of precipitation. Back over to the desk.